Today we're going to be taking a look at the prophecies of someone very interesting in history, a woman by the name of Mother Shipton. Today I'm going to be reading to you from some of her various prophecies that were written uh, somewhere around the 1500s. She lived during the time of King Henry VIII in England and she predicted his victory in 1513 and she prophesied the dissolution of the monasteries. She led to the redistribution of wealth and land held by the monasteries in the emerging middle class and existing noble families. She was a prophet, a psychic if you will. Many feared she was a witch. But amazingly, her prophecies today hold some keys that might even look at, uh, oh, the BP disaster. Let's take a look. I now read to you from Mother Shipton Prophecies. And now a word in uncouth rhyme of what shall be in future time. Then upside down the world shall be, and gold found at the root of tree. All England's sons that plow the land shall oft be seen with book in hand. The poor shall now great wisdom know. Great houses stand in far-flung vale, all covered o'er with snow and hail. A carriage without horse will go, disaster fill the world with woe. In London Primrose Hill shall be, a center hold the bishop's see. Around the world men's thoughts will fly, quick as the twinkling of an eye. The water shall great wonders do, how strange, and yet it shall come true. Through towering hills proud men shall ride, no horse or ass move by his side. Beneath the water men shall walk, shall ride, shall sleep, shall even talk. And in the air men shall be seen, in white, and black, and even green. A great men then shall come and go, for prophecy declares it so. In water iron then shall float, as easy as a wooden boat. Gold shall be seen in stream and stone, in land that is yet unknown. And England shall admit a Jew. You think this strange, but it is true. The Jew that once was held in scorn shall be a Christian then be born. A house of glass shall come to pass, in England, but alas, alas, a war will follow with the work, where dwells the pagan and the Turk. These states will lock in fiercest strife, and seek to take the other's life, when north shall thus divide the south, and eagle build in lion's mouth. Then tax and blood and cruel war shall come to every humble door. Three times shall lovely sunny France be led to play a bloody dance. Before the people shall be free, three tyrant rulers shall they see. Three rulers in succession be, each springs from different dynasty. And when the fiercest strife is done, England and France shall be as one. The British olive shall next be twine in marriage with a German vine. Men will walk beneath and over streams, fulfilled shall be their wondrous dreams. And in those wondrous far-off days, the woman shall adopt a craze, to dress like men and trousers wear, and to cut off their locks of their hair. They'll ride astride with brazen bow, as witches do on broomsticks now. And rowing monsters with men stop, does seem to eat the verdant crop. And men shall fly as birds do now, and give away the horse and plow. There'll be a sign for all to see, be sure that it will certain be. Then love shall die, and marriage cease, and nations wane as babes decrease, and wives shall fondle cats and dogs, and men shall live the same as hogs. In 1926, build houses light of straw and sticks, and then shall mighty wars be planned, and fire and sword shall sweep the land. When pictures seem alive with movements free, when boats like fishes swim beneath the sea, when men like birds shall scour the sky, then half the world, deep drenched in blood, shall die. For those who live the century through, in fear and trembling this shall do. Flee to the mountains and to the dens, to bog and forest and wild fens. For storms will rage and oceans roar when Gabriel stands on sea and shore. And as he blows his wondrous horn, old worlds will die and new be born. A fiery dragon will cross the sky six times before this earth shall die. Mankind will tremble and frightened be for the sixth 
heralds in this prophecy. For seven days and seven nights men will watch this awesome sight. The tides will rise beyond their can and bite away the shores, and then the mountains will begin to roar, and earthquakes split the plains to shore. With flooding waters rushing in will flood the lands with such a din that mankind covers in muddy fen and snarls about his fellow men. He bears his teeth and fights and kills and secrets food in secret hills and ugly in his fear he lies to kill marauders, thieves and spies. Men flee in terror from the floods and kills and rapes and lies in blood and spilling blood by mankind's hands will stain the bitter many lands. And when the dragon's tail is gone, man forgets and smiles and carries on to apply himself too late, too late, for mankind has earned his deserved fate. His mass smile, his false grandeur, will serve the gods with anger stir, and they will send the dragon back to light the sky. His tail will crack upon the earth and rend the earth, and shall men flee king, lord, and serf. And slowly they are routed out to seek diminishing water spout, and men will die of thirst before the oceans rise to mount the shore. And lands will crack and rent anew. You think it strange. It will come true. And in some far off distant land some men, oh such a tiny band, will have to leave their solid mount and span the earth, those too few to count. Who survives this? And then begins the human race again but not on land already there, but on ocean's bed, stark, dry, and bare. Not every soul on earth will die as the dragon's tail goes sweeping by. Not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink of rotting bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on land. But the land that rises from the sea will be dry and clean and soft and free of mankind's dirt and therefore be the source of man's new destiny. And those who live will ever fear the dragon's tail for many a year, but time erases memory. You think this strange, but it will be. And before the race is built anew, a silver serpent comes to view and it spew out men of like unknown to mingle with the earth now grown cold from its heat, and these men can enlighten the minds of fellow men to intermingle and show them how to live and love and thus endow the children with a second sight, a natural thing, so that they might grow graceful, humble, and when they do, the golden age will start anew. The dragon's tail is but a sign the mankind's fall and man's decline, and before this prophecy is done, I shall be burned at the stake at one, my body singed and my soul set free. And you think I utter blasphemy. You're wrong. These things have come to me and this prophecy will come to be. She goes on in another prophecy to say, The signs will be there for all to read. When man shall do his most heinous deed, man will ruin, ruin kinder lives by taking them as to their wives, and murder foul and brutal deed, when man will only think of greed, and man will walk as if asleep, he does not look, he may not peep, and iron men the tale shall do, and iron cart and carriage too, and kings shall false promise make, and talk just for talking's sake, and nations plan horrific war, and like as never seen before, and taxes rise, and love lively down, and nations wear perpetual frown, and greater sign there will see as man nears latter century when sleeping mountains gather breath and spew out mud and ice and death and earthquakes swallow town and town in lands as yet to me unknown. And Christian one fights Christian two and nations sigh at nothing do at the yellow men great power gain from mighty bear from whom they've lain these mighty tyrants will fail to do, These they fail to split the world in two, but from their acts a danger bred, an ague, leaving many dead. And physics find no remedy, for this is worse than leprosy. Oh, many signs for all to see, the truth of this true prophecy. Decide for yourself, folks. Decide for yourself.
But if I were living anywhere in the Gulf states, I would get the hell out now before they make you get out. I love you. I care about you. I bring you these words not to scare you, not to harm you, not to create more pain, but because you need to know the truth. The prophets do have truth to share. Listen to the prophets if nothing else, because they all agree this is world's destiny.